Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. It's that time once again where I give you a roundup and a guide for all of the events that came with the latest update. Time for 1.43 and well if you thought 1.42 was bad for the event you're in for a treat here because these are absolutely the worst and laziest events we've ever received for a GT7 update. They're absolutely awful awful now in terms of the events themselves though we will still go and have an overview dive into the event and then have a look at the things like payouts and such and i'll give you a few tips and pointers along the way event number one is going to be the sunday cup classic as you can see it's twenty-five thousand credits for the maximum reward with this one obviously a 50 percent bonus if you do get that clean race in terms of the vehicles it's aimed at obviously classic cars suggested pp is 350 and as you can see from the typical opponents it's all of these slower cars and more classic cars that feature in gt7 ranging from samba buses beetles golf gtrs etc now this one is clearly aimed at the brand new renault 4 gtl and that's exactly what i'm going to be using i do recommend if you are going to tackle this one especially on the harder difficulties to actually put some upgrades on this vehicle a few decent upgrades and it will take it to around about 350 plus so i do recommend doing that as if you don't, the likes of the GTI are probably going to absolutely wipe the floor with you. Now in terms of the event itself, I did find it rather quite fun and quirky. It wasn't as boring as I expected it to be. And I think that's mainly just because the Renault 4 is a great little fun car to drive. There is no denying that. When it comes to this little vehicle, it absolutely finds its spot in GT7 as being one of the more quirky cars that we've seen in recent memory. However, it is still the typical affair for a Sunday Cup Classic. Very, very short, no tyre life, no fuel usage, anything like that. It's a typical sprint race. This time obviously hosted at Sakuba, which I feel like is a track that does genuinely suit these slow lower vehicles it's a much more tighter and nimble affair when you get to this track so you are feeling like you're taking absolute advantage of these vehicles considering they won't be hitting any rocket ship speeds or anything like that but with decent upgrades you can absolutely tackle the more tough sections now in terms of the ai themselves the main ones that you're probably going to have problems with is going to be the palaces and the golf gti's now if you don't get them in your event which you probably will then you're probably going to get very lucky but they certainly were the ones to watch they do have a relatively higher top speed than a lot of the other sunday cup classic cars and obviously the golf gti being a gti performance vehicle from that era has the overall best potential of the bunch however you should get away with a relatively easy win here just like i did gapping the rest of the field by around about three seconds come the finish line so let's have a look at overall time and payout for this event Typical Sunday Cup Classic fashion, this is a very, very short event. 3 minutes 47.033 on the hardest difficulty. A fastest lap of a 114.741, which was set on the final lap. Around about a three second gap to the car behind, and then another chunk of time to the car in third place. Payout for this one with the clean race bonus is 37,500 credits, around about four miles in length. So really not too much to tackle here. You'll probably get this one done nice and easy. So in terms of the event itself, what did I think? I did enjoy my time, but again, it's just a kind of blip. It's kind of blinking, you'll miss it, done and dusted type of event. As much as I absolutely loved driving the Renault 4 and I did get a great little taste for it with a few upgrades, again, these events you would probably have to tackle all of the Sunday Cup classics in the Renault to really feel like you're actually getting the time that you want with these cars and getting relatively decent competition built to a certain spec. In terms of this event itself, it's very much a copy paste job from the rest of the Sunday Cup classics, so don't go into it expecting anything absolutely groundbreaking just because we've got a new car that is relative to that type of race. So in all honesty, Good event, enjoyable, but not anything amazing. Next up, we have the European Clubman Cup 600. Three laps at Suzuka, maximum reward for this one, 60,000 credits. 
Overall, this is going to be the longest event of the bunch, and that's not really saying much. It's only kind of made longer because Suzuka is longer than the likes of Laguna Seca or Sakuba. These are all going to be free lap sprints. As you can see, it must be a road car set from one of the European countries. Your typical main rivals are going to be the likes of the Julia, some Porsches, and obviously some of the hot hatches that come out of these European countries. Overall, definitely a much better race event. If you're not going to go for the overpowered route, suggested PP is obviously 600. And that's what we're going to do here with the Audi. We're going to go just over that 600 PP limit, running sports softs and some relative upgrades to get the car to its, I guess, potential 600 PP build. So, as you can see, in terms of the, I guess, competitors that are on the track a lot of them you're going to see all generations of the audi some hot hatches to begin with before getting into the more high-end cars as you start making your way through the grid i did enjoy it i felt like it was very very competitive throughout there's a nice wide range of different vehicles to get through obviously beginning off with the hot hatches you'll probably clear them in absolutely no time obviously we do have the added advantage of four-wheel drive and such unlike some of the hot hatches which are mainly front-wheel drive and such once you start getting to the middle of the grid, you're going to start seeing some of the faster cars around and some cars kind of working their way through the pack as well against some of the slower opponents. As you can see, we've got the likes of the Porsche's 911 GT3. We've got um, an Alfa Romeo Giulia as well, which is kind of, you know, zooming around and uh, did have a good run with me uh, down the main straight going on to lap two, which was overtaking a Ferrari and a BMW Z8, which was just absolutely fantastic. The sound of the Alfa absolute bliss so yeah a very cool visual and you know audio experience there but in terms of the front of the ai this is where the main meat of them are and this is where the tougher vehicles are going to be so just be aware that if you are going for a relatively stock option you will need something with a bit of power a lot of these vehicles up towards the front of the grid aren't standard don't get me wrong they look fairly standard but they're definitely running some extra parts there to allow them to absolutely fly off so in terms of the front of the grid we've got the likes of a lamborghini tvr bmws and such uh, obviously the alpha and the porsche making its way through the grid um, from a little bit further back but again by the time they become competitive the race is going to be done and dusted considering it's very limited at only three laps again not too long in terms of overall time you're looking at around about six and a half minutes it's probably maximum to get this one done if you stay within that 600 range we took a relatively easy first place in the end managing to build a gap up of around about eight seconds to the mercedes which finally did work its way through the grid just like i mentioned fastest lap of a two minutes 12. now in terms of the payout though this is the best one of the bunch which isn't saying much considering with that clean race bonus you're still only looking at ninety thousand credits and around about 10 miles in length so yeah yeah, not looking too good in terms of the event though my overall opinion i did enjoy it but again it was just kind of like the one previous to it at sakuba once you start getting into the groove and getting used to the car the event's just done and dusted this is where the older gran turismo games felt like they really took advantage of some of these road cars we have the likes of the four hour at sakuba with the mazdas and such and i just don't get why this isn't a thing for all of these different series and categories that gran turismo 7 has I would absolutely love a 30 to 1 hour race just racing these European road cars. I feel like it would be absolutely fantastic. But again, this one just falls into that typical format that this category has of just beer sprint races. And that is it. It is a massive shame, but overall it was enjoyable. But again, a just slight drop in the ocean, done and dusted type of event once again. Not filling me with hope for this one then, as the next race goes over to WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca for the Japanese Clubman Cup 550. As you can see, a bit of a smaller payout at 40,000 credits for the maximum reward without the bonus. Obviously, this is the final event of the bunch, and this one is just going to fall into the same trap that the others do, that they are nothing different from the rest of the same category. As you can see, three laps, 12 vehicles, road cars, Japan, very, very small credit payout, and the standard typical opponents with some additions from some of the post-launch cars. 
overall again just falling into the trap of just following what the rest of the category does and not being anything special this would have been a great time to have some special events with the sunday cup classics a bit lengthier and a bit better and more competitive same with obviously the euro 600 and this the japanese 550 again i did enjoy the racing but that is made better by the fact that the car is enjoyable to drive again just like the renault 4 the evo 9 that we're seeing here is a great car to drive and will make any event actually rather quite decent considering that you could probably put this in the most boring event and still find fun in the way this car drives so again the car's really making the event the event itself is actually pretty terrible so we did overshoot it as we went for an overtake with the nsx i did end up bumping it but i will still get the clean race bonus at the end which i thought was rather quite bizarre again just no indication of what loses that clean race bonus i really hope that does become a thing in a future update where we kind of know if we've still got it what's causing us to lose it and such so we can kind of analyze um these events down to a t again in terms of the ai i don't think you're going to have too much trouble i've got this evo kind of tuned to around about 550 plus um, so again we're kind of in the competitive category but again it's so split in terms of the cars themselves you've got some slower ones mixed in they're so gapped and the only real kind of trouble you're going to have is the Supra considering it seems to start off way in front of the rest of the grid we did eventually get past the super though and that would absolutely confirm our win gapping it by around about three and a half seconds as we cross the finish line another relatively easy first place only made competitive by keeping the car around that suggested pp limit as you can see four minutes 50.429 completion time for this one fastest lap was on lap three when we kind of got through the field of a 135.440 again typically expected as you get basically a clean track towards the end of the event overall payout for this one with the clean race bonus is 60,000 credits so again not really breaking the bank and only seven miles in length and that is going to give us our daily uh, marathon reward as well in terms of this event itself though did i enjoy it yes but like i said when the you know the kind of renault 4 at sakuba it's the car making the event enjoyable not the event itself it still falls into that typical parameters of the 550 uh, championship that we see here where they are very very quick sprints they're all typically three laps in length and they will typically be over and done with before you know it again a massive shame that these could have been potential special events within these set categories and i would absolutely love to see it and love to get some more time with this kind of i guess suggested pp rating and obviously the country of cars and such so again polyphony really need to go back to the drawing board with these it isn't really i guess enough for a monthly update again a lot of people are going to say it's free but look if you're going to give us a bad economy at least it give us enjoyable events and a way to actually spend time with these vehicles yes they're catering to all the new vehicles but again it's one event for each and then that's literally it you have to literally go back and go back to events that we've probably done a hundred times over so overall what did i think of the 1.43 events they're probably the worst ones of the bunch i thought 1.42 was terrible in terms of its events but i think this one now takes the cake for absolutely the laziest events that i've ever seen in gt they're all free laps they're all sprint there's no tire no fuel life anything like that and it's actually the new cars making them fun i could imagine if you kind of went into this and you know as a player down the line a new player you wouldn't even think these are post-launch events there's nothing really separating them apart from a new track to run the same categories on there's nothing stand out about them i am really not a fan of this and polyphony really need to go back to where they went with 1.40 by actually changing it up we had rain we had you know a starting on pole position and then defending kind of race these are the typical chase the front runner eventually overtake job done within a couple of laps there's no strategy here and there's no real enjoyment to be had but that's my personal opinion let me know your thoughts down below thank you to all of my channel members and i will see you in the next one take care guys peace